Hello, my lovely more thoughts. Welcome to another Ultimate Decades Challenge episode. Today, I'm on here to clarify a few things so you guys don't get too confused because this is going to be a, a tiny bit confusing, but uh, we're still doing Ultimate Decades. However, however, I started my Decades Challenge in 1550. It's when I originally was like, okay, this is my starting point. And I was really, really like into the Tudor era. And so that's the time period that I wanted to start with initially. However, since then, I have updated my rules, my ultimate decades challenge rules to start in the 1300s. And that's as far back as I will go as for at least for myself. Anybody wants to come up with other rules <laughs> further back, by all means, go ahead. Um, but yeah, the rules now start at 1300s. And I never got to play the 1300s time period to 1550. So for 250 years, we're missing a good chunk and i decided to start this and i did however you can only find that on tiktok right now that is where i posted a lot of i say a lot but there's not that many that's where i, st I posted a, um about eight or so not too long they're probably like only a minute tops along tiktoks of the what i like to call the prequel of our ultimate decades challenge so who were the lightwoods before they were lightwoods basically so eventually this prequel will then lead into our current day decades so if that makes sense to put it into like maybe simpler terms it's like game of thrones but now we're getting like the prequel season so you know what happens before all the shenanigans go down that's basically this so we're starting a prequel they will i will be streaming these live on the weekends and then i'm still gonna be posting the tiktoks if you want to follow me over there you can but i will be posting the vods on this channel so you guys can check out the raw footage um without further ado that's all i have to say that's all i have to clarify so if you see this don't be alarmed don't be confused um and yeah i'm going to now queue up the eight tiktoks that i've done so far and then we'll continue on from there and everything will be like regular vods so i'll see you soon i'm Mori gamer and today we're starting the first part of our decades challenge in the 14th century this is done from my ultimate decades challenge rules let's get started on making our founders this is my starting sim her name is lettuce godfrey and yes this actually is a very appropriate name for this time period actually so when it comes to the 14th century aka the 1300s aka medieval times people would dress very differently so underneath first layer undergarments would be a smock of some sort almost like a very long dress to simplify it <laughs> over women's smocks they wore kirtles which is just another long sleeve dress i guess you could say i'm gonna go ahead and choose between this outfit or this outfit i think it's probably the most representative to this time period Let's just go with this one. Next, we're going to need some hose or stockings. I'm just going to use some in-game because we already have some in-game. I'm going to go with these orange ones just to be a little more colorful. They're usually made out of wool. They did have leather shoes with straps. And we're just going to go with these uh, simple brown ones. For hair, hair was always in an updo. Here, I gave her a nice braid. Next, we're going to want to put a head covering on her. Women during this time period were very modest. And to show that, you covered your hair. And I do have a couple options. I think once she ages up, I will give her maybe some of these options because I do have a team preset on and some of the hats just don't work. For teens, it just makes them taller again. So I think this is not the most accurate for the time, but I kind of like it. It represents like the wrapping of some linen to cover her hair. And I like that. For my rules, since we're start starting so far back and during a time period where there was a lot of death because of events, world events, like the Black Plague, the Hundred Year War, yada yada, people died pretty young. So I'm gonna go ahead and make her parents. This is John Godfrey, her father. This is Mary Godfrey, John Godfrey's wife, and 
my founder's mother. My rules also call for two other side households. The reason being is because, again, there's a likelihood that my Sims will die. We need some backup. We need some family backup. So John and Mary had two other daughters. This is Rose Godfrey and this is Ida Godfrey. There are the two younger sisters of my founder sim, Lettuce. This is my version of the deck challenges that I have been playing for a little bit. And in my challenge, there are death rolls, which will further be explained along the way, just in case you're not familiar on how this works. So don't fret. Now that we have all our sims ready, and I'll be showing you where they're gonna be living. I will see you in part two. Welcome to part two of my ultimate decades challenge. So this is where the Godfreys are going to be living and residing for a few generations, actually. Over here, we have where they will farm because we do have off the grid and a simple living lot trade as the rules request. These are CC items. This is just a mailbox just to fit the times a little better. Over here, we have the yield cookbook mod, which actually allows your Sims to go hunting, foraging, and do some pastime events if you'd like and go to the village as well to visit your local physician, uh, meat markets, village shops you know so on so on this is my sims house this is a little like mud hut houses were made out of mud or wood depending on how much money you had so starting off it will be made out of mud and then hopefully we can progress to something better a lot of this stuff are cc items just to help make believe that we're in medieval times and then over here we'll be doing a lot of our laundry that will eventually have to get done oh. For the women of the household, I did place down four knitting yards, which I should give them now. So they have something to pass time and be able to create and hopefully earn us some money. So they each get one of those. Also, just so they can help out around the house as well, everyone gets a broom. And this is a mod by Mizoryuki, which allows your Sims to sweep your house if you have the Bust the Dust uh, DLC. For the Ultimate Decade Challenge rules, the parents do not count as the founder sim. So for John Godfrey and Mary Godfrey, they're both going to have to roll straight out the gate. They are not our founder sim. Since John and Mary Godfrey are both adults, that puts them at 30 years old. During this time, life expectancy was really, really low. So this has the potential of being really, really bad for my sims, especially the girls, because then they would be orphans and that's not good. So let's go ahead and roll. Ladies are first, I guess. So Mary will go first. That is an eight. That means Mary passes. I'm going to get John out of the way just so I know what he rolls well. That is a 17. So he's in great health. So that means that the girls are going to be motherless and that really sucks i'm not gonna lie already out the gate so i'm gonna go ahead and kill her off probably due to some sort of illness they don't live in the best conditions no no mary and everyone's starting to figure it out oh no here come the waterwork here comes grim by the way that is an override i'll go ahead and see you guys in part three i can't believe we already have someone die and welcome to part three three of my ultimate decade challenge. We're still in the year 1300. Since spring is actually almost coming to an end for my Sims, I made it a priority to farm. All hands on deck, because honestly, if they don't start hunting and harvesting for the next season, then they're gonna be stuck eating gruel, and that's not fun. We did lose a lot of money, but it'll be useful and helpful in the long run. After that, just to make a little bit more money back, um, we did start knitting, but honestly, it didn't really help that much. We definitely had dad join the blacksmith career, so hopefully that will bring in some money. Ida did find these random stray dogs and honestly they were so freaking cute that we had to adopt them and bring them into the family i don't know how we're gonna feed them because we can barely feed ourselves oh, we'll figure it out somehow oh oh this part was funny somebody ended up pranking the toilet and then got dad so i thought that was kind of hilarious and i wanted to add that in here okay eventually we did go over to the next village probably in search for some baked goods that's where lettuce met peter 
and they got to chatting. And since she's been really sad lately, he kind of cheered her up. And that's when, I guess, emotions took over. It didn't take long before they started falling for each other. And honestly, I didn't do this part, but he autonomously woohooed. And fun fact, during this time, if you woohooed, you were automatically married. You didn't need a witness. You didn't need to go to like church or a priest and get married, and have a ceremony. So I was like, you know what? Let's go tell the sisters, which honestly, they seemed pretty happy for her. And I went ahead and got them married in the game. Eventually, we did have to go home. We told John the news, dad the news, and let's just say he doesn't seem very happy with Peter right now. So it's going to be something we're going to have to work at and help the relationship out. That is it for part three. I will see you in part four for hopefully some baby news. This is part four of my ultimate decade challenge. The year is now 1301. It is Easter. I went ahead and took my Sims to church to be a little festive and get out. That is where we met Peter's parents, AKA Lettuce is mother and father-in-law. And there was drama to say the least. They were looking for a dowry payment and high key, we don't have that. So Peter's dad and Lettuce's dad got into a fight. Oh my God, but it's okay. Cause John Godfrey won, AKA Lettuce's dad. Sorry, Peter. My sim is puking. She is definitely pregnant. Since it's the 14th century, pregnancy tests are not a thing yet. So we're not going to be taking pregnancy tests from here on out until like around the 1960s. Lettuce goes ahead and lets the family know that she is pregnant. She reveals it to everyone. Peter goes hunting and comes back with a squirrel, a hare, and a duck. That is from the Yield Cookbook mod. And go ahead and cut up the meat for later usage. Easter seemed to be all right for my Sims. Now it's summer harvest. It's finally time to do some harvesting on the farm. The oversized crops are where we get the most amount of money though. We get to planting the summer season seed. And that's when it hits me that there are certain vegetables and fruits that do not grow during this time. So I went ahead, did some research and adjust to the time. And now we get to planting the summer season harvest. And for the first time, we don't have to eat stinky gruel. We made some fish head stew, yum. Uh, we go ahead and buy a bar because the men apparently want one and they serve themselves some drinks, AKA waste our money. Peter does end up sick and getting an illness and he's not doing too good. I'm not gonna lie, but he seems to be doing a little bit better after a bath. I didn't mention, but Ida actually meets a man during Easter when we went to church. The man is so enamored, apparently he comes over and asks for Ida's hand in marriage. He proposes a marriage of convenience which Ida accept. We do perform a nice little ceremony in front of all the family. Their marriage does come at a cost though. For a dowry payment, Simon does ask for the bar. Ida is now part of the Ashdown family and she moves out, says goodbye to everybody in the family. Hopefully we'll see her very soon. And finally, what I've been waiting for, Lettuce gives birth to her baby boy. This is Arn Beckett. Every time a mom gives birth, we do roll to see if she survives childbirth. She rolled a good number. She's doing fine and she's healthy. We also roll for babies to see if they survive as well. And Arnie rolled a good roll. So he survives as well. Everyone is doing good. See you in part five. I'm Morbid Gamer and welcome to part five of my ultimate decades challenge. So the year is still 1301. It seems like a lot of my Sims have been getting sick lately. Nothing too serious though. Ghost of Mom came by to pay a visit, which was pretty sweet. A lot more of the usual daily chores, like gardening and doing laundry and fixing stuff that breaks. Finally got some fishing done, which is really neat because that provides food. But also in the future, we could probably sell that too. But yeah, at the moment, we don't really have a lot of money. So I'm working towards getting us at least a chicken coop. Rose asks Lettuce to go to the town next door. This is Everard. He is handsome and young and cute, and he is a knight. This is where they get to know each other. Time passes, and eventually he 
ask Rose if he can court her. But she agrees. They're so cute together. Next, I decide to make a tapestry of not only the couple, but also my first gen heir, which happens to be Peter Beckett. And then there is the couple portrait. And I will be making one for each generation couple and the heir as well from here on out. Ida comes over and she is super duper pregnant. She announces her pregnancy to her sisters, which is really cute. Probably expect her baby very soon. Lettuce takes this opportunity to show Ida her nephew because she hasn't met him yet. A few days later, Everard comes over after some courting. He asks dad for his blessing to marry, which John does not give. He's like, I don't know you like that. But Everard asks Rose anyways if she will marry him, which she agrees. Now we have a wedding to plan. I will see you in part six this is part six of my ultimate decades challenge the year is 1302 and everything is a mess the beckett's and the godfrey's are a little bit of a mess right now but we have a wedding to plan so we get our butts eventually to church where everard and rose are getting married and they have the cutest ceremony look at him in his night outfit that's so cute so she moves out and she takes the dog with her we do end up giving like 250 simoleons worth of dowry money to everard ward we get to eating some carrot pudding yum and dancing that is when Ida goes into a labor i have to rush her back home and that's when she has her first baby boy which we end up naming Philip. We roll for mom for her birth and how unlucky am I? She rolls a freaking one. That is a death sentence when it comes to birthing moms. That's disastrous. That means she dies. However, in comes her loving husband, Simon, and pleads with death to spare her. Which, crazy enough, he grants. I was like, oh my god, what just happened? Here you go, Simon. Mom gets brought back. We roll for baby and baby rolls a good roll. So it was just like, ugh. So all in all, it was a close one, but she's doing fine for the most part. Back home, I'm like, all right, we really need to get this ball rolling for some money. I start knitting. And that's when I get the brilliant idea of opening in a live-in business using Little Miss Sam's live-in business mod. The fish that we catch, we're able to then sell. And then people do come and buy some. Peter and Lettuce try for baby for like the fifth time. We've been trying every single day. And so far, no baby signs. Pregnancy is set at about 30% chance. So it's not always gonna be a successful woohoos. It is officially the next sim day and it's Arn's birthday. So we have to roll for him to see if he makes it past baby stage. And lo and behold, he rolls a 16. That is not a good number to roll. That means baby passes. So I allow mom to cuddle baby one more time. Poor little Arn did make it. Mom is really upset. Dad is really upset. Overall, it's just not a good time. However, there's some hope for the future. I think mom is pregnant again because she is puking. So I'll see you in part seven. And welcome to part seven of my ultimate decades challenge. The year is 1302, but we're right at the end of it. We're about to start 1303 very soon. My Sims are still pretty sad, but they're moving on. I'm keeping them busy. Right out the gate, the Ward family has to give birth. This is Rose Ward and she has a baby girl. We go ahead and name her Winifred Ward. We roll for mom and she rolls a good roll. We roll for baby as she does good as well. I have dad go ahead and meet his new baby girl. It's so sweet. This is where the wards reside and where they live. I guess this would be considered a city, at least for this time period. Here's a snapshot of the family tree, just in case anybody's getting confused. Mom now officially knows that she's pregnant, so she goes ahead and tells Peter the good news. Now it's really time to start hustling for money because I didn't say this in the last part, but we got a chicken coop. So we start selling some fish. I also have letters write a letter to her sister, Rose, to see how she's doing and her new baby. 
three months later and I finally have lettuce. Go visit her sister, Rose Ward, in the city. It's been a while since they've seen each other, but most importantly, we're here to see the new baby of hers, her niece. We do chat with Everard for a little bit, but then I get the news that Lettuce's sister, Ida Ashdown, is in labor again. She's about to have her second baby. This time she has another boy and we name him Thomas. Mm -hmm. We roll for mom and she rolls a good roll, but then we roll for baby and baby doesn't roll a good roll. So baby does end up passing. Most likely it is a stillbirth. Lettuce goes back home and with good news from the city, she brings back the new baby chick and rooster. So hopefully we can get some like hatchable eggs and eggs for the future and eventually maybe a cow because that's like my end goal right now. Lettuce has a high enough skill that now she can knit a baby onesie and these are overrides to look more medieval-ish like. The override is by Medieval Sims Taylor and Carpenter. So go ahead and check out her override. It's really neat for this time period. Join me in part seven for the year 1304. I'm Morbid Gamer and welcome to part eight of my ultimate decades challenge. The year is 1303 and my sim is getting there with her pregnancy. This is now baby try number two. Unfortunately, baby number one didn't make it. Definitely hoping for better odds this time. I have gotten requests to make the plum tree available online. So now it is and you can check it out in my link tree. We're doing good with the fish selling business. So much so that I purchased a rooster and a hen and they're a full adult ones. So that's good. We're gonna have eggs now. Which will help with the cooking because now we can make flour. Some time passes and with more money, I'm able to get a quote unquote shed, sort of. It's a mod. It's basically the cow shed, but without the shed. However, it's also Mayday. So we invite the whole family over for Mayday. It's just full of festivities and music and dancing. And that's what I intended to happen until Peter's dad dies. Oh my goodness. Mr. Beckett, no. He overheats. It's so hot this sim day. And now everyone's just sad and upset. Payday's officially ruined. Everyone's crying. That's when I realized we should probably ask Peter's mom to move in with us because she's going to be alone. She doesn't have a husband. We go ahead and plan a funeral for Peter's dad. That's when I get the notification that Lettuce is going into labor. Why is everything so dramatic <laughs> with this family? So we quickly bury Peter's dad, go back home, and Lettuce is giving birth. She has a girl this time. She names her Matilda. Cutest name. Roll for both mom and baby. Good rolls overall. So things are going strong for now. But it's nice to have Peter's mom around for some extra help. With that extra help, we're then able to get a cat, which I name Milky. Not the not the most creative name, I will say. So cute though. We can get milk. With milk, we can make butter, which we do make. And now we should be able to make pies and other stuff. And that's all that happened in 1303. So join me in 1304. In the next part, the ward's baby is aging up. So hopefully we can finally get a baby to go past the baby stage. All right, buddy. I'm Mora Gamer and welcome to part nine of my ultimate decades challenge. The year is now 1304. Grandma is doing her part and she's helping out with the baby. We're still eating dinky gruel. Rose is over for breakfast for some reason. That's when she announces she's pregnant again. Same old, same old chores have to get done. Cleaning the coops, taking care of the harvest and selling our fish and milk, plus some knitting. So we do get some money saved up and I want to make more of a market stand for my Sims to sell their 
your fish and items and product. Make it look a little more official. So this is what it ends up looking like. And maybe in the future, we'll invest in like some nicer tables and shelves. So looking at my timeline, it's Winifred Ward's birthday. She's aging into a toddler. We have to roll. She rolls a good roll and gets to age up. This is our first toddler ever in this save file. I give her a bit more time appropriate makeover. And here are her cute little outfits. She is so sweet. She's already playing with the chickens, but the chickens are not liking it. <laughs> It's so cute. Later on that evening, I get the notification. Rose Ward is going into labor. We were just there, but I head on over and have her give birth to a boy named Milo. We roll for baby, fingers crossed, and roll is a bad roll. This is not looking good for us. Uh, we're nearing the end of the year. Have I mentioned my sim is pregnant already? In the next part, we'll have Matilda age up. Hopefully she survives. And then pretty soon we'll have the next baby birth in the main house. See you in part 10 and in 1305.